Nelson, the Executive Director at National Whistleblower Center, and I'm here with Michael Cohn, a very experienced whistleblower attorney who's a partner at Cohn, Cohn & Colapinto and a board member at National Whistleblower Center. We're both based in D.C., right? Yeah, except right now I'm not, but yes, I am. <laughs> and one of the big issues in D.C. are federal employee protections, because there's a lot of people who live in this area who work for the government. There's people there. who work all over the United States and the world for the government. I think the government is the largest employer in the country. No way. Yes. Bigger than Amazon? Bigger than everybody. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm really happy that you're here to talk with me today about federal employee whistleblower protections and some of the issues in the area and what people should do when they're thinking about blowing the whistle. So tell me a little bit about your experience with federal whistleblowers. Well, federal whistleblowers pretty much all have to go through the Merit Systems Protection Board. And that is a daunting process, but there's some good news and some bad news. Uh, the bad news is most people don't make it through the process. Um, some the last statistics I remember seeing were somewhere like 90% of all the whistleblowers end up losing their cases through that process. The good news is there are ways to win. And if you're more proactive, you can be much more successful. So under the whistleblower law, there's it's called shift, burden shifting. It's like who has to prove what in federal court or in, the, in that case before the Merit Systems Protection Board. And under the whistleblower law, the standard shifts to the government to come up with clear and convincing evidence that they wouldn't have taken the retaliatory action or done what they did. So it's the burden shifts to the government. It's one of the few laws where the, where the defendant actually has the burden of proof. All right. The problem is whistleblowers don't quite, they're not lawyers to begin with for the most part. And when you start out, even the lawyers who represent them screw things up because the Merit System Protection Board rules and regulations are very complex and very difficult to maneuver through. And what you find out ultimately is if you do your discovery correctly at the right sequence, you can win your case. But if you screw up the sequence and don't get it out timely enough, you'll get zero. And then the government gets to say whatever their story is and you don't have anything to rebut it. So in the very beginning, you have to, you ha and you have to file, uh, they won't give you the information you want. And if you don't file your, your objections within a timely time frame, you waive all the objections. That's why there's a lot of steps. So you really have to watch out, make sure that you know what those rules are, when you have to make the objections uh, and when you have to, uh, force the government to give you the information they want. Sometimes it means going to the administrative judge to get them to force them to do it. But once you're on that track and you're rigorous with it and you get the government to lay down their entire case, they can't change it. They are stuck. And we already know that they're lying, okay? And it makes your job a lot easier. You can then pull out all the shortcomings and identify why it's why they don't have clear and convincing evidence and you'll then go on to win. But if you don't do in the front loading part of it, get the information you want, force them to lock down everything, uh, you, you can run into some big problems. <laughs> so have you ever been in a situation where something like that has happened? Oh, I have been in situations where I have been forced to get the government to turn over the information and where the, you know, I thought the government was going to be cooperative and going to do it, but the time period went by, but there was another way to get it through another rule. So I was able to, to come, get around it, but I'm saying that the rules are complex. It's really the timing of everything of when you do it. Uh, the whistleblower controls 
whether the case will stay on a very quick time clock, but only the whistleblower can waive it. And so if you have everything right and you're on this quick time clock, you can have your case uh, heard pretty, pretty uh, quickly, which is unusual. So there's a lot of good things if the law were to, to work correctly. The bad thing that I've come across is who are the administrative judges? They're, they are not administrative law judges. They're administrative judges, they're employees. Typically, a lot of them seem to come out of the employment side of the government. So they're pro government employer leaning. And I, I had one administrative judge in like the opening conference basically said almost word for word, I don't care if your whistleblower saved the government a billion dollars, it doesn't mean a thing to me. I said, okay, very hostile. They're, the, the administrative judges I've come up with have been actual, some of them actually been overtly hostile. So that's not a good thing. So for me, Practicing law as a whistleblower lawyer since 1985, I made my career at trying to get my federal clients outside of the MSPB process. Because you may end up losing before the administrative judge, and then you have to go before the board itself and up to the Court of Appeals. And it's just long and drawn out. And it's very, um, as I said, 90% of the whistleblowers seem to lose those. And this is the MSPB even operating right now? Well, that was a whole thing. Under Trump for four years, there was no operating MSPB. So a final whistleblower decision has not been issued in four years. And there's a big backlog, which is another big problem, which- So how can whistleblowers get out from the MSPB queue? Uh, there's come something called a mixed case. And a mixed case is not something you stir. <laughs> A mixed case is basically if you happen to be in uh, a, a protected class under Title VII, age, race, sex, national origin, I'm probably missing some here or there, but if you fit into one of those- Basically almost everybody. If you fit into that class and you have a whistleblower case, you can combine them and tell the government when you first file your case that you're filing it as a mixed case. And typically what, the and you file it with the EEO office of your federal agency. And typically what was happening uh, when I filed these claims, the EEO office said, no, we don't deal with whistleblower cases. We only, we're only gonna investigate the Title VII violations. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't even care what they do. You're basically, you have a, a clock. I don't quite remember what the timeline is, but it's very short. They have like 30, 60 days to uh, issue a determination. And if they don't, you then have your right to bring your mixed case into federal district court. And that was, that's as a result of really two cases that I had uh, the fortune to represent both women whistleblowers, the first against the Navy Research Lab in, in the District of Columbia. And we went up to the federal circuit, DC circuit, and we got a ruling that said mixed cases can be brought in federal district court. And what's even good, the Title VII remedies are not as good as whistleblower remedies. In Title VII, the, the, the burden always shifts back to the employee and it's difficult to meet that burden. As I remembered, in the federal one, the burden stays with the employer. So in, in some of those cases, I didn't, I didn't even pursue the Title VII action. I needed the Title VII action to get jurisdiction in federal court. But once I was in federal court, you know, given a lack of resources and things of that nature, we decided with the client just to pursue the, the whistleblower claim. So getting a federal district court is, is essential. You have to say that's where you want to go. If you file just an MSPB case as a whistleblower, you have given up your rights because uh, you have to make the declaration immediately. Uh, uh, at the beginning. And if you decide just to file an MSPB case and that's how you go into the system, you then can't get into the mixed case side. You have to file it as a mixed case in the beginning. So you're saying that when someone's thinking about blowing the whistle, 
they should make sure that they figure out if they do have a Title VII case as well. And if they do, they can also bring their case in federal court. And when they decide to bring a case, they should make sure to bring both at the same time. Yes, in federal court, you just file a complaint identifying your Title VII claim and your whistleblower claim and lay it out like normal, fed, like a complaint. Uh, like I said, the, the Title VII uh, burdens are higher. So uh, in one case, you could have your title, the some of the government could file a motion to dismiss your Title VII claim and that gets thrown out, but it doesn't affect the, the status and jurisdiction of your whistleblower case. You get to still bring that in federal district court. Sounds very complex. What should people do if they're a little bit daunted by the idea of navigating the system, but they still want to blow the whistle? You have to find a lawyer who's really knowledgeable in this area of law. Uh, and honestly, even the lawyers who are knowledgeable uh, have a hard time. It's just that complex. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, they, they need to rehaul these rules and regulations and, and make them user friendly. They are not. But as I said, if you actually are able to comply with them and study them, you will win your case because the, the government has the same types of burdens and same hurdles they have to overcome too. And they won't be able to overcome theirs. It's just that the whistleblower's burdens tend to come first. And if you don't meet them, you're going to lose first. So there's no need for federal employees to wait until they have something they'd like to report to better understand their rights as a whistleblower and the process of introducing a whistleblower claim. As Michael has so clearly outlined here, if you don't file the, follow the rules to a T, you might end up in a bad position. A great place to find more information about blowing the whistle as a federal whistleblower is at whistleblowers.org. That's whistleblowers with an S.org. That's the National Whistleblower Center's website. And you can look into finding an attorney at www.kkc.com. And of course, you can always find Breaking Whistleblower News at Whistleblower Network News. Thank you so much, Michael, for walking through this important area of law with us and telling us a little bit about what federal whistleblowers can do if they're thinking about blowing the whistle. Well, Have a great day. You too, and good luck to all those potential whistleblowers out there. <laughs>